outmatched by the nimble A6M0 and outclassed by the new high-performance Hellcats and Corsairs, the F4F Wildcat was on its way out. Yet, the U.S. Navy needed a new, versatile fighter to defend its rapidly expanding fleet of small, vulnerable escort carrier ships. Grumman was busy producing the Hellcat, and the job was passed to General Motors to take the aging Wildcat design and transform it into a specialized fighter capable of holding the line against the Imperial Japanese Navy fighters. The result was the FM-2 Wildcat. The most impactful upgrade was the new 1,350-horsepower Wright R1820-56 Cyclone engine. It was a significant increase in power over the F4F's 1,200-horsepower engine. The new engine allowed the FM2 to achieve an increased climb rate of 3,650 feet per minute, nearly double the climb rate of the F4F Wildcat. This was a game-changing advantage for the FM-2, especially during the high-stakes fleet defense missions flown from escort carriers where every second counted. In a desperate race to intercept enemy aircraft, particularly against the high-flying and fast-diving kamikazes, the FM-2's explosive climb performance could mean the difference between a successful intercept and devastating damage on the vulnerable escort carriers and transports. In the chaos of a dogfight, a pilot's greatest fear is hearing the guns fall silent. The F-4F-4's six machine guns offered an ample firepower, but with only 240 rounds per gun, they would fall silent in just 14 seconds of continuous firing. This left pilots with very limited margin for error, and it was a critical flaw in a theater where air-to-air -air engagements were prolonged and intense. The FM-2 Wildcat addressed this fatal vulnerability with a necessary trade-off. It was fitted with only 450 cal guns, but each was supplied with approximately 430 rounds, nearly doubling the ammunition load per gun. While this sacrifice reduced the firepower, it allowed a sustained firing time of 26 seconds. This high-stakes gamble was paid off. The increased ammunition endurance meant a FM-2 pilot could stay in the fight longer and deliver longer bursts to a target that might not go down with a single pass. For the less experienced pilots, this allowed them to correct their aim and keep firing. They could walk their rounds onto a target, a tactic that proved lethally effective, but it required more ammo to succeed. The upgrade is best measured in the results. The top-scoring Wildcat squadron of the war was the VC-27 that flew the FM-2. They were credited with a staggering 61.5 air-to-air victories. The FM-2's new engine had immense power, but its increased torque threatened to violently twist the aircraft during takeoff and dogfights. It was a deadly liability for pilots operating from short escort carrier decks, with virtually no room for error. It was an engineering problem that had to be solved to prevent the new engine from causing more crashes than victories, and the solution was a taller vertical stabilizer. By increasing the size of the rudder and vertical stabilizer, General Motors engineers effectively neutralized the violent torque and transformed a potentially dangerous aircraft into a stable and effective gun platform. Furthermore, the FM-2's overall weight was reduced by approximately 530 pounds compared to the F-4F. The combination of a more powerful engine, larger tail for stability, and a lighter airframe made the FM-2 a far more maneuverable and forgiving aircraft than the F-4F, especially at the lower speeds or higher altitudes. This was the critical component that made the FM-2 a viable and deadly fighter proving that a smaller, smarter design could survive and thrive in the Pacific. The FM-2 was not just an air-to-air -air fighter. Its true purpose was to be the last-ditch fighter to protect vulnerable escort carriers and troop transports. It was a more capable ground attack platform to support the troops. It could be armed with two 250-pound bombs or up to six 5-inch high-velocity aircraft rockets or HVAR. These improvements made them more capable for attacking enemy ships as well. FM-2's versatility was thrust into the spotlight at the Battle of Samar, where a task group of escort carriers and destroyers faced a massive Japanese battle fleet. In a moment of sheer desperation, FM-2's and other aircraft took off from the small carrier decks and launched desperate attacks against the enemy battleships and cruisers. FM-2 pilots tried to distract and disrupt massive Japanese warships with rockets and bombs, rather than to destroy them. This contributed to the improbable outcome where a vastly outgunned force survived a major Japanese attack.
The FM-2's ability to strafe and bomb contributed in convincing Admiral Takeo Kurita to turn his powerful surface fleet around. The FM-2 Wildcat was never meant to be a star. Despite the major upgrades, it still lacked the speed of the Hellcat and the raw power of the Corsair, a fact its pilots knew well. But it was a specialist, born of necessity and defined by its task to protect her for the vulnerable components of the fleet. Its upgrades were not about flashy performance records, but about delivering a single decisive outcome in a moment of crisis. Thank you for watching, and please support our works by subscribing to our channel.